Hello again from AM Builds. If you want to jump to the enclosure build, please advance to the time displayed on screen. Otherwise, here is the background behind the project. I'm in my office today for this, as the workshop is in even more chaos than usual as I put together the modules for my new bench. Today's video details making an enclosure for my 3D printer, a tool that very many makers use routinely and many others should be considering. I was new to 3D printing last year and wanted to get something as near as possible to a consumer project so I was spending as little time as possible tinkering with the printer and as much as possible making things for my project. I chose Prusa as the manufacturer and by chance I made my decision to buy the day they launched the lower cost mini model and I placed my order that day albeit many hundred or even thousands of places back in the queue I suspect from the several weeks it took to come. I started with bespoke pipe fittings for my koi pond project, still ongoing like this 160mm pipe adapter for the airlifts and this large format pipe boss, long prints often taking more than a day. And then Covid happened and the world w word went out for all 3D printing folks who could make them to make face visors for healthcare practitioners as there were simply not enough to be had. I made over 250 in all, 3 hours printing time for each one, running my, local, my printer practically round the clock and donating visor kits to my doctor and vet practices, the local dog shelter and mostly to my pharmacy for distribution to local care homes. After that, in the late spring, back to prints from my projects, like these knobs and Festool rail clips for some parallel rail guides, and the Festool track narrow rip tool and timber join now both featured in other videos on my channel here. The printer has been excellent with very few problems but occasionally I would suffer a failed print but it's very difficult to see what, what the pattern was behind those failures. However with the colder times in the autumn and over the winter I was experiencing more print failures finding the dreaded spaghetti monster on the printer as it failed to stay on the print bed or the layers came apart. It was only over the recent cold snap that I started seeing the red screen of death and the problem looked like it was simply that our old house was too cold for reliable printing. The Victorians burned tons of coal and their houses had solid walls and no insulation. With no tons of coal and a limited heating budget I moved my printer around the house but nowhere was warm enough to print reliably and so an enclosure was needed and I had to interrupt the bench build to make it. Here it is. Made from 12mm birch ply so that it was not too heavy, the overall footprint is 550 by 550 millimetres and 500 millimetres tall, about 21.6 inches square by 20 inches tall. The reason for the choice is that many Prusa owners have made enclosures out of an IKEA coffee table called a lac, and the top was 550 millimetres square, so I knew it would fit the printer fine. I'd actually bought a lac when I got my printer, but with no issues in the warmer months I had simply used it to raise my printer to chest high by putting it on top of my desk level office cupboard. I didn't like the fact that the lac table based enclosure had a solid top which didn't lift up, but retaining the table and making the enclosure to fit on top seemed the sensible choice. Essentially it's a rectangular box with the top and front faces split into two so that the larger portions of these faces could be glazed and openable. As I didn't have the piano hinges to hand and the opening parts would have to be fitted to suit, I marked these dimensions with an asterisk on the tape as an approximate. As I'm already making lots of drawers and boxes in my shop, I dominoed the box together using the excellent Festool DF500 domino machine and an FC Tools DCS plate, the subject of another video on my channel. Do please view that video if you are unfamiliar with this accessory as it will be a purchase you are unlikely to regret. You could of course just use screws or pins along with your glue. Although not strictly necessary I wanted to glaze both the top and the front. You could get away with just the front as being able to see inside without opening the box and disturbing the air is the major advantage of an enclosure. I marked up the back of the panels at 50mm and 80mm in from the edge and marked up the front of each panel with a 70mm periphery. The edge of the cutter I used in my OF 1400 router was 75mm from the edge of the tool's plate and so I ripped a 25mm scrap so that I could router against a fixed upright as an easy way to produce an acceptable result quickly. 
I used a corner chisel to sharpen the corners. Turning the board over I drilled pilot holes and followed up with a 20mm Forstner bit to give me a radius corner. At that time I realised it would be handy to domino on some little rectangles to locate the front of the top, so I made them whilst the top panel was still intact. I then cut out the glazing aperture using my TS55 rail saw, finishing the cuts with the Carvex 420. I had a piece of polycarbonate sheet from an old pet food stand, complete with the paw print logo, and cut the two panels using the rail saw. I installed the polycarbonate using glazer silicon by working along the overlap, squeezing the silicon with my fingers to fit the width, and then moving forward. No clamping was needed, just a flat bench for the panel to rest on while the silicon cured. Not knowing whether it would become too hot, I installed two 3D printed vents centred at 60mm in and down from the two front corners. I made them to suit one of my hole saws, a 47mm I recall. I also 3D printed and fitted a cable management port at the back right hand side of the frame. I fitted a 40 watt thermostatic, and it must be thermostatic, small space heater to the back of the box. I chose a Dimplex, a well known reliable brand. This is not a place for a dubious auction site knockoff. I set it to about 20 degrees centigrade or 68 degrees Fahrenheit. I then had to wait whilst the 25mm wide piano hinges and door handle arrived. This picture shows the top on the bench with the rectangular locators fitted and the top cut to size to just overlap the sides and the front panel attached using the piano hinge. Dry fitting the top, the front was also trimmed to size and a drawer D handle fitted using a Craig handle jig on the bottom of the front and the door assembly attached to the top of the box with a second piece of piano hinge. That was essentially the woodwork done, which ironically coincided with the day the snow melted. I wanted to positively locate the front and 3D printed some little angled cleats to do that. They were made to be fitted with 3.5 by 16 mm screws without the risk of penetrating the front of the door. I subsequently found that the front top corners of the size tended to migrate inwards a little bit and to stop this and stabilise the structure I printed two more little wedge blocks to fit in the top. It was then time to populate the box for testing. I would thoroughly recommend a heavy base on foam to attenuate the noise and reuse the pieces of XPS insulation and 300 by 300 by 30 mm thick standstone paver from the printer's location in my office. The power supply transformer is kept outside the enclosure. I went all in for the first print to attempt to make draw handles with ABS and material I'd received in error and was not able to use as really you need an enclosure to print with it and that combined with good ventilation as the ABS gives off some nasty gases. However in my workshop I have a pair of French doors so ventilation is not an issue. The design for the handles comes from a YouTuber called Alexandre Chappelle, his channel being very much well worth a visit. He has graciously provided the handle file for free in his web shop, the address of which is alch.shop. The print was started. I wanted to demonstrate how quiet the printer was in the enclosure and have recorded this short clip. My phone simply didn't pick up any appreciable noise and the noise in my workshop, including background noise from the outside, including construction activity next door, was just over 40 decibels, a quiet living room. I run my printer in my office with a smoke alarm but still leave the door open and so the attenuated sound is an additional benefit. The first print worked just fine and I printed seven more back to back for my bench project without incident in this more difficult material. Since then I've been busy. These ambitious prints are first time prints for my second stage cyclone dust extractor for my bench project, a print that could have easily been spoiled with drafts or poor temperature control. I hope you found this video interesting and please help give my channel a boost by liking it if you enjoyed it. If you aren't 3D printing, perhaps it has whetted your appetite for doing so to augment your projects and my experience of the Prusa Mini has been very favourable. Their product is robust and they have email and live chat support by folks with direct technical experience and expertise 
providing first-time fix or suggestions, and that's such a pleasant surprise from the usual helpline offering. I've put links for the printer and the handle files in the description below. I can share the pieces I made if there is a demand, so please let me know in the comments if you want copies of my files. I have added a PayPal Me link to this video in the hope of giving something to my son Malcolm who produces my videos. He has made my amateurish rambles and mobile phone shots and videos at least half decent, which is quite an achievement, I hope you agree. If you make an enclosure based upon my design and or use the components I have made, I hope you might consider making a modest donation for him. Please have a look at our other videos and if there's anything of interest, please subscribe and click the notification bell. The next video will, I hope, be the overview of our new Festool Power Tools optimised large MFT style bench with integrated power and two stage dust extraction. Coming to this channel soon. See you then. Goodbye.